Gaza has caused the masks to fall off. And everyone has seen the hypocrisy of these isms. And the world is looking for an alternative. O oh, Ummah of Muhammad, they are looking for you. The Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought to us the opportunity because the hearts of the human beings are looking for this alternative. We have to become the change we wish to see. We have to be the change. Mindfully put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and live for Him. Don't move except for His sake. Don't remain stationary except for His sake. Don't speak except for His sake. Don't remain silent except for His sake. Live until your life becomes a waqf, an endowment that no one has control over except your Lord, Subhana. And that is where ultimate freedom is in. We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking His blessings. We praise Him and we request praises and blessings upon our master and teacher, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I greet you with the greetings of peace, the greetings of safety and mercy, the greetings of the people of paradise. Salamu alayhi alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. You can do better than that, brothers and sisters. There's more voices here than mine. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullahu khairan. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He blessed us with the best revelation, the Quran. And He revealed this best revelation to us in the best language, the Arabic language. And He did so via the best angel, Jibreel alayhi salam, to the best messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all this happened during the best of all nights, Laylatul Qadr, the night of power and decree and virtue, a night that you and I consider better than 1,000 months. And in the best of all months, the month of Ramadan, and also in the best of all places, Makkatul Mukarramah. And in this best revelation that came to us in the best of all ways, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared the ummah that received the best revelation as the best of all nations. And we heard this in Sister Fatima's talk just now. In the first quarter of the fourth juz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. That you are the best of all nations. Subhanallah. But my brothers and sisters in Islam, just as was said before me, every title comes with its share of responsibility. There's no title void of responsibility. In fact, titling void of responsibility is an exception to the rule. Honorifics are an exception to the rule. And we have been commanded to engage with revelation. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us we are the best, and we know that we live in a world where every title is connected to a responsibility, then we naturally have to ask ourselves the question, why? Why are we the best? What responsibility do we carry that makes us the best? Why weren't the nations of other messengers given the title of being the best? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the very same verse, He tells us why. He tells us that we are the best because we ultimately carry the responsibility of the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam, the prophets and messengers of Allah. No nation before us had to carry that responsibility because after every prophet, Allah sent another prophet. But after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah decreed that he would be the final messenger. No prophet to come after him. But you and I know, and we've lived long enough to realize this, that mankind existed after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The battle between truth and falsehood existed after him. The battle between justice and oppression continued to exist as well. And if there's no prophet to come, then what solution does humanity have? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this solution in the Quran. The first solution being that he will give us the best revelation that no one will change. Allah himself subhanahu, glory be to him, will preserve it. There's no need for further recalibration. No need for another prophet to come. But then we have the other dilemma. 
Allah always sent a revelation with someone to distribute it, to distribute its teachings, to distribute its message. So we have the best revelation, but if no prophet is to come after Muhammad, who will run the process of distribution? Allah says in this verse, in the fourth juz, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they collectively will be the distributors. The young from them and the elderly from them, the males from them and the females from them. That before us, this responsibility was carried upon the shoulders of individual people. But after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the legacy of justice, the legacy of prophethood, the greatest legacy the world ever experienced, it will be taken off the shoulders of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and transferred to the collective shoulders of an entire ummah, yourself and myself, my dearest brothers and sisters in Islam. O ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I wish I was speaking to you under better circumstances. And Dr. Norman yesterday said, the cup is half empty. But we are an ummah of positivity. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yuhibbu al-fa'al. He used to love positivity in all his affairs. And that means this ummah is a formidable ummah. And your presence here is testimony to this, that despite everything that's happening, you have attended, you have stood up, and you have become part of, insha'Allah, what is the change. You are testimony that this ummah is an ummah of resilience, similar to a seed that is planted deep beneath the earth's soil. It's surrounded by darkness. It's surrounded by hardness. It's surrounded by extreme cold. But it never loses hope. It nudges and it pushes and it forces itself to grow with the hope that one day it will break through the soil and experience the warmth of the sun and the wetness of the humidity of the air and it will grow and grow and become a tree insha'Allah that will last over a hundred years. This is the reality of the Ummah of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Ummah of Muhammad, people are looking for an alternative. And Paul Williams earlier, may Allah bless him, he said that he himself, if I can paraphrase, went through an awakening. An awakening after seeing the behavior of the leaders of the isms that have been marketed since time as the bastions of humanity and human progression and human rights. Gaza has caused the masks to fall off and everyone has seen the hypocrisy of these isms and the world is looking for an alternative. O Ummah of Muhammad, they are looking for you. The Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are the alternative. And it's time to present ourselves as an alternative. Sometimes I ask myself this question. Is the test greater on the people of Gaza or greater upon you and I? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us an opportunity, especially with those within our sphere of influence, to present to them the religion of truth, a religion that has laws that are wise by design, just by design, subhanallah, merciful by design, and transformatively beneficial by design. We are now tested to deliver when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought to us the opportunity because the hearts of the human beings are looking for this alternative. We have to become the change we wish to see. We have to be the change. And the question only, only remains how. What change do we need to effect? How can we do this? And over the last two days, we've heard about what is needed organizationally. But if I can zoom in further and bring the message closer to home and highlight a few messages referencing us as individuals. You see, my brothers and sisters in Islam, change isn't an event. It's a process. Yes, Allah can bring about change with a mere B. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said he won't do that. Allah has said, لا يغير ما بقوم, That indeed Allah will not change the situation of a people 
until they change their situation themselves. Allah wants the change to come from within. Change is a process. It's not an event. And moving forward, O servants of Allah, we need to consciously become mindful of being a people that put Allah first. Let us start putting Allah first. For those who put Allah first will never ever finish last. Stop conflating result for purpose. Many of us study a degree for the sake of a degree. We work our jobs for the sake of the salary. We, we, we go to the gym for the sake of being fit. These are result-orientated visions. The Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finds Allah in what they do. They make Allah their purpose for what they do, knowing that the result is a matter of physics. If you go to the gym, you'll be fitter. If you pass your degree, you'll have a degree. If you meet your KPIs, you will have a salary. It's a result of what you do. The Ummah of Muhammad lives upon a paradise-centric mindset. They put Allah first and make Allah the purpose for what they do, knowing that whoever puts Allah first will never finish last. So number one, mindfully put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and live for Him. Don't move except for His sake. Don't remain stationary except for His sake. Don't speak except for His sake. Don't remain silent except for His sake. Live until your life becomes a waqf, an endowment that no one has control over except your Lord, subhanahu. And that is where ultimate freedom is in. Number two, the sunnah, the better. Not the sunnah, the better. But the sunnah, the better. And the sooner you apply the sunnah, then definitely the better. Put the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before your culture, before your whims, before your fancies, before the trends, before the norms of society. For whoever walks the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being true to the testimony of faith. For when we announced ourselves as believers, we declared that there's no one worthy of worship besides one Allah. But we also declared that we will not be with Allah except upon the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And improve how you learn about Islam. We talk about bad answers, but sometimes there's bad questions. We are gone beyond the age of asking a scholar, is music allowed or not allowed? Is intermingling allowed or not allowed? And so on and so forth. Take it further. Put yourself in the process of the sunnah, the better, and ask your scholar, did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do this? Did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do that? And wallahi, you will only get one answer. No one will tell you there's a difference of opinion about what he did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا it's time, the, Allah says, in your messenger is the best example. Put him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, first for the sunnah, the better. That's number two. Num number three, implement the idea of ummah. I just said to you, we collectively carry the legacy of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make your mandate about the we before the me. Every choice in life has a trade-off and an opportunity cost. Many a time, many a time, we choose ourselves over the majority. In Islamic jurisprudence, there's a principle. Al-maslaha al-amma muqaddama ala maslaha al-khas. The benefit of the majority takes precedence over the benefit of the minority. Islam nurtures us to put the we before the me. We talk about supply and demand. It's an economics equation. The more supply, the lower the demand. The lower the supply, the greater the demand. Every choice we make creates a supply-demand paradigm. Be mindful about what you choose, O Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and raise your children upon this mandate of the we before the me. Last but not least, O servants of Allah, put the idea of living in the service of the vision of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the main mandate in your life. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we want change. But change will not happen. And wallahi, wa billahi, wa tallahi, I've thought about this. I swear by Allah thrice. It's not going to happen if the change you seek is one matter of another thousand matters in your life. If becoming a better Muslim is one matter amongst paying my bills and improving my financial standing and material well-being and so on and so forth. 
No, O servants of Allah. Change will come when you make the idea of change and servicing the vision of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the mandate. Where it governs the waking of your every day and the sleeping of your every night. It becomes the conversations that you have with your children on the table. It becomes a paradigm shift for you. That when you see them watching TV, you know that that's at the expense of something greater in their life. The idea of putting change as the main mandate shifts parents from being people who raise children and puts them into being people who raise leaders. And there's a difference in this paradigm, my brothers and sisters in Islam. If we want change, and it's going to be one thing out of the many things we need to do, it's not going to happen. Make change the main mandate, and then calibrate everything around it. For time is short, and before you know it, you will see something that you heard about in lectures, and in khutbas, and you read in the books of Islam. And that's the day when Allah lifts the veil between us and the angel of death. Very soon we will see it. Wallahi, the only thing guaranteed to us is death, not life. Way in the Quran did it say we have a guaranteed time span to live. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that we will die. And this should teach us that when we wake up every day, we should thank Allah because we want borrowed time. Death could come anytime. And when you sleep, you need to make sure you are able to analyze your day, the cost-benefit analysis. How did I move the needle up in my life today? Is my today better than yesterday? Because I'm on a guaranteed journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The difference between you and me and the people of Gaza is Allah lifted the veil between them and the reality of this earth and we have the veil in front of our eyes. The patience they have is phenomenal. We feel broken, but they give us the inspiration. The people on ground zero, they give us the inspiration. Why? Because they see the world for what it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our past and inspire our futures. Ameen. And make us the change we seek to achieve. I have to get off the stage. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh.